Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us here to stay curious. Sorry for the little delay in some programs. Today it's pouring rain here on the space coast of Florida. And uh, we had a few little hiccups here trying to get the thing up. So we will always come on during the weekday at, at Monday through Friday at around 4 o'clock. And we're so glad you're with us because I am sitting in the delivery room of America's Space Age that put that vehicle on the moon 42 years ago tomorrow, November 19th. We celebrate the landing of Apollo 12, the second lunar landing by America. The second time we did it in 1969, fulfilling President Kennedy's promise to do it before the end of the decade. In fact, we doubled down on that, President Kennedy. So proud of our Apollo workers. One uh, could be not more proud of than Marty Winkle, who's behind the controls today, uh, doing both the camera and our computer program here. Marty worked on the lunar module that you see sitting right there, Marty. There's your LM6 sitting on the moon. He was inside that ascent stage doing his job as an electrical engineer, looking out those triangular windows, sitting on that hump of the ascent engine. You can't, uh, and he's one of our best and, and really uh, unbelievable volunteers here. Marty Winkle, we salute you on the 52nd anniversary and all you Grummies that worked on this fabulous lunar module that they never had any problem with. In fact, it was so good, it saved the lives of the Apollo 13 astronauts. You all know that. Let me get my picture, my drink out of the way, too, because right there's the Surveyor 3 spacecraft that landed uh, in April 1967 ahead of this. And so the second lunar man landing, uh, they wanted a precise landing was planned. Apollo 11 actually was almost three miles off the mark because of a couple, uh, how many? Four and, a half. Four and a half miles, Marty says, it was off its mark because of several uh, mixing fa uh, factors uh, that we've talked about. But this was going to be a pinpoint landing by Pete Conrad, who this was his third flight. He had two Gemini flights. He was 40 years old. And, uh, uh, Al, uh, and Al Bean, who was 37 years old, was the rookie. Orbiting the Earth was their Navy buddy, Dick Gordon, who I think was uh, 39 years old. And he spent uh, three days orbiting the moon by himself, or a couple days, or one whole day. They were down there a little over uh, uh, a day and a half on the moon. So uh, the mission duration of the whole Apollo 12 was 10 days uh, uh, from launch to landing back on Earth. And... Um, we talked about yesterday that C.C. Williams was the Gemini astronaut that was to be the lunar pilot instead of Al Bean, and he was killed in a T-38 uh, plane crash, uh, and uh, Bean had to take his place. So, of course, we talked about Apollo 12 getting hit by lightning, uh, and uh, we even showed you the, uh, the aux. Somebody corrected me and said it was the aux, not A-U-X, S-E-C to aux is the switch there that... We have there that space geeks have fun of remembering that switch over Bean's right head. And uh, everything went out. Uh, lights went out for about 30 seconds. Uh, no power in the command module. When it come back to life, everything worked fine, and they pulled off the moon landing. Now, Pete Conrad <clears throat> was the shortest of the astronauts, barely five foot six, And... Uh, so when he landed on the moon, he had something to kind of say as tongue in cheek back at Neil Armstrong. We'll repeat that in a minute. But I uh, wanted to point out that we're going to show today's program. I purposely called, uh, went through photographs that are on Flickr on the Apollo. Uh, they call it the Project Apollo Archives on Flickr. There is over 15,000 images all the images taken during the Apollo program on film as if it's a film strip that you're looking at. Uh, and you can see that for free on Flickr. And I, I purposely picked out some pictures that you probably have never seen before uh, to tell a little story about these two friends on the moon. And before I forget about it, the uh, uh, these three astronauts are buried within sight of each other at Arlington Cemetery. And naive me, when Marty Winkle took me and Triple T to uh, uh, Smithsonian to see Triple T's crew, astronaut crew outfit, 
there. And you'll see him Friday, tomorrow, Triple T uh, Stories from the White Room. Uh, I na naively thought we could find these gravestones real quickly in Arlington Cemetery. Not, those of you that have been there know, it's like a uh, 10 city blocks in itself. And uh, so I'm going to go back there and just scope out the astronauts next time there uh, at the wonderful Arlington Cemetery where we honor uh, all of our American heroes, uh, men and women, by the way. So, want to uh, all before we get kicked off here on Apollo, and I just get so excited. Marty, I was 15 years old when we landed on the moon, did it twice. We couldn't wait to see the pictures on the moon like we saw from Apollo 11. There was a disappointment in that I'll share with you here in a minute. But um, for this landing to be within 600 feet of the Surveyor spacecraft that's down there on a crater, and this is up on top of a crater, was pr truly phenomenal. And they landed on what they called Pete's parking lot, Pete Conrad's parking lot. Now, uh, Apollo 14 even landed closer within 300 feet of their target, and that was Al Shepard that did that. So, let's, But first, we have some things to share. And one thing we love to share with everyone are our astronaut birthdays. And we want to wish a happy 70th birthday to Mark Brown. He was a shuttle pilot twice mark brown shown here with his purdue boilermaker shirt on he is one of 25 astronauts who brag about being from the cradle of the astronauts uh uh purdue but uh there's just as many astronauts born in the buckeye state of ohio i'll, I'll remind you there you boilermakers but boiler up to this good astronaut mark uh neil uh, brown Born not November 18th, 1951 in Valparosa, Indiana. So he's a Hoosier through and through. He was pilot on STS-28 in August 89, a Department of Defense mission, and STS-48 Discovery, which was the upper atmosphere UARS mission. Ten days in space for this former shuttle astronaut. And as you know, we love our shuttle astronauts. They're in our communities doing great things every day to promote space and as we say here bridge the space between us so let's get on to the uh oh i want to uh well i wanted to mention one thing i have a note on here is this is thursday night and those of you want to see the moon go under eclipse all right the eclipse starts at 2 a.m friday morning so tonight at 2 a.m wherever you're at this is eastern standard time the moon is going to slip into the shadow of the earth cast out in space. It'll th it's a four-hour event, but if, at 4 o'clock is when it's 97% covered up by the earth's shadow. The bright full moon should look a ruddy red or brown and just a, an edge of it be really bright because it's not fully in the earth's shadow. So if I were you here on the East Coast time, get up at 3.30, have a cup of coffee and a snack and go outside and look at the uh, 4 o'clock. You'll be amazed at what the moon looks like. Uh, and then you can go to bed and catch uh, some more shut-eye. And then the next day when you see it rising, you'll go, wow, that sucker's bright. But last night at 4 a.m., I think I remember. <laughs> but it should look very orangey. It's going to be high up in the sky near the Pleiades uh, um, uh, star cluster in there. So want to make sure that you get some time to get a little moonshine this weekend. That's the kind of moonshine you can't get too much of, remember. So... Well, we have want to mention that we have guests here, Mark and Barb Smith of Nashville. Welcome. Both of you took our tour. They love space. Jessica Galloway just came in from the monsoon storm after helping Marty remotely on our new outfit here. So thank you, Jessica, for getting us rolling again. Once again, for a few minutes behind four, bear with us. We are a nonprofit museum, and I've got I jump through hoops all the time. Uh, like Jessica does and Marty, other things we do in our personal lives in the museum. Marty, his personal life is helping uh, humanity, basically, with T-shirts for runners and all kinds of good stuff, medallions that we sell at the park. So we're all busy, but for a few minutes late, don't fret. We love you as our Stay Curious watchers on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So please tell your friends to like, share, subscribe, and follow us because we need your support for our museum to do its job of igniting the future generation of space workers with our artifacts from the birth of the space age. And like I said, hello, I'm here in the delivery room. 
There's Marty's Lunar Model Module 6 from Grumman sitting on the moon. Jesse, you had something? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I forgot it. Okay, <laughs> Jesse forgot. If it comes to me again, I'll flag you down. All right. And also tell your friends we're very informal. We have a lot of great information you got to get any uh, get you can't get anywhere. And I'm going to show you a couple things you're oh, not going to see anywhere. Watch hours. Oh, watch hours. Yes, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh uh when you're uh doing the house chores, throw us on there and put us in repetition we'll so we can get playlist. our YouTube watch out find and the find the playlist. And press play. And press play. Okay. <laughs> And then we have other content on YouTube besides Stay Curious. We've got some awesome uh, interviews with a lot of rocket people. We've got a whole reel of rocket explosions. Marty, you've got a comment. Yeah, Robert Lewis says, I have an Apollo 12 tilt. The astronauts designed for me as Dick Gordon ancestors come from Scotland. Tell them we want a picture. We want a picture of you in the kilt. I actually, I, I know we have pictures. I've seen pictures of him in the kilt uh, visiting around here. Yeah, and Robert Law. We can't wait for you to get out of Europe and come and see America here soon, buddy. But yeah, uh, so he says, Dick Gordon, Robert Law is one of our A plus uh, followers. He is in Dundee, Scotland. Uh, and in Dundee, Scotland, it is a five hour difference, I think. So it's nine o'clock there. And uh, anyway, thank you for that comment. Dick Gordon, one of your own up there. And he was a character. Dick Gordon lived to be 89 years old, I think. Pete Conrad died in a freak motorcycle accident, age 69, in 1999. Uh, freak, I said he had a minor uh, accident running off the road into his side of a, a, a road there, and he died of internal injuries, what I'm trying to spit out. And we lost Al Bean a couple years ago at age 88 or 89, and he, of course, made a, a career out of art uh, and space art. So let's look at this wonderful journey to the moon with uh, Apollo 12, as I've set it up properly for us all here. Here is Lunar Module 6, number 6, the tail numbers, if you will, built by Grumman. And what I have pulled out of these pictures are a lot of pictures with the astronauts' shadows in them. Me and my shadow, okay? And what says being on the moon more than a human shadow being there, all right? So uh, hopefully you haven't seen too many of these. And like I'll set this up again, the web, uh, the uh, Flickr has 15,836 photos, high-resolution Apollo imagery scanned by NASA's Johnson Space Center, all right? And you look at them as the strip of negatives, and you see a lot of mistakes on there. Plus, what's interesting is you see how they cropped in on some of the famous pictures you know, like Buzz Aldrin standing there with Neil Armstrong in the visor and Lunar Module 5 in the visor. That's called the visor shot in our industry. And that's about uh, uh, three quarters of the frame. There's a lot more to it than you think. Yeah, Marty. Okay, yeah, Marty. Uh, 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 good good idea, Marty. Um, let me go this. The camera is uh, holds something like this bottle here. It's, it is mounted on their chest on a plate that, that holds independently. So... Uh, uh, you see a lot of uh, photographers at events hanging, have cameras hanging off of them. Once in a while, you see one hang on a strap. They have a strap here, and there's a metal fixture attached to the camera. Hasselblad cameras, which is not 35 millimeter film, it's three times bigger. It's 120 millimeter film, and it was super thin, so that they could get more film in these magazines. They did not bring the cameras back. They're laying on the surface of the moon. And those lenses, because they were heavy, and they wanted to get rid of all the weight on the liftoff, because that was the most important liftoff of those astronauts' lives. But the camera's there, so if this is the lens pointing at you around there, they're moving around, and they've been doing training with how to set the settings with those gloves, and a lot of these settings on the moon are very bright, so they're shooting 500th of a second on probably 100 ISO sensitive film, very low sensitivity, uh, and uh, Neil Armstrong had the camera for uh, one camera on Apollo um, uh, uh, 11 landing, but I think there was two on 12. I, I, I'd like to confirm that, and sorry that I didn't, so I'm, I'm not going to say that's a fact. That's something I'll look into. I know on other missions, both astronauts had cameras, particularly 15, 16, and 17. But, uh, but they did. They, they can hand it to another astronaut and then put it on their breastplate there. Yeah. 
from that one, uh, the last one of the last interviews we had recently, somebody said that they weren't even going to send a camera mm -hmm. because the cameras were so pricey. Well, it's just, and that's engineering thinking, uh, right brain like me, uh, 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 Jessica there. The engineers really didn't see a need for cameras even on the, the, the first Mercury uh, flights. And, uh, and they, so they, uh, uh, but yes, there's a lot of camera stuff in there. And only, there's only like uh, three, I, I forget how many, maybe there's like uh, 1,200 pictures of the entire Apollo 12 voyage. From, from that the astronauts took, all right? Think about how many you're taking with digital cameras every day, just clicking them babies off, right? So, well, let's look at there. I don't want to go real long on our show today, folks, but you know I love Apollo and bragging about Marty. There's Lunar Module 6 there. That is the back side of it where you're looking on the right side is Quad uh, 2, and Quad 3 is on the left. Quad 4 be around on the other side. Love the shadows there. One of the important things the astronauts wanted to do was see how the landing pads landed. They wanted to send those pictures back to uh, the technicians. Very soft landing there. Up there at the top, you see the cone of the uh, descent engine uh, bell there, and you see the crater it made at the bottom. And you see that gold, yes, that gold spike there. Marty, you can point out. Thank you. Well, that's, that's the bell. That's the, that's the descent uh, engine bell. And at the bottom there, show them the crater that it made. And, of course, it blasted uh, away there. And show them the uh, – and it landed pretty softly. That is the five-foot uh, uh, pole that was the contact light pole. Show that again, Marty. That uh, Yeah, that's the contact light pole there. Bent there where it hit the ground, a blue light comes on, uh, that, uh, and it's about an inch in diameter, and they knew that they – just shut the engine off and drop that other five feet so that the cushion shock absorbers in the legs would crunch. And Neil Armstrong landed so lightly that they didn't crunch. That's why the, the uh, ladder was up kind of high for them when they got up there. The engine bell was correctable in case they didn't know how deep the lunar oh, surface was. There you go. Good point. Marty said the engine bell was crushable, so it wasn't designed of it was designed just to handle that exhaust plume, uh, which was invisible in space, by the way. You would never see that, though you see it in movies. Um, so good. And then particularly 715 with the heavier lunar uh, rover, and, and they did crush a little bit. Now, here is Pete Conrad going off of the porch. Uh, Al Bean took this picture, very unusual picture, uh, though you see this pretty frequently. None of the other astronauts really took a picture of the other guy going down the ladder. Uh, and uh, uh, when Pete Conrad got at the end of the ladder down there, I'm going to show this, Marty. Let's put this up here in our little show and tell. Uh, uh, Jessica, could you zoom in on that, please? Uh, this uh, Marty has been involved with the Grumman reunions that every five years celebrated the uh, uh, anniversary of these lunar landings. And this was for Apollo 13, 12. And on one of them, I'm going to read what it says there. This is the Intrepid is Lunar Module 6. And now at the bottom, Al Bean says, frequently on the lunar surface, I said to myself, quote, this is the moon. This is the earth. I'm really here. I'm really here. Al Bean said. Then, it, uh, so when, and this is a picture of uh, Bean going down the ladder. Uh, the pinpoint landing by Conrad was 600 feet from Surveyor. And when Pete Conrad stepped off the lunar module, he said, to paraphrase, that may have been one small leap for Neil, but it's a heck of a big leap for me. Because he was like five foot six. That may have been a big step for me. Yeah. Well, Marty, you made the poster there and you got leap there. So, <laughs> but he said, but he was making a joke that he was short. And now he won a bet because he had a 500 bet with a female journalist that NASA qu told Neil what to say. He said, no, nope, NASA doesn't tell us anything like that. She, and she goes, oh, yeah, they're going to tell you what to say when you come out, walk on the moon. He says, nope, I'll bet you 500 bucks. And he said that, and she welched on the bet, he, he yeah. famously said. Now, up at the top here, Pete Conrad said, I made the remark when we went over the top, uh, meaning got into orbit and headed to the, the moon, Eureka, Houston, the Earth is really round. 
And when I get back to Houston, I get all this mail from members of the Flat Earth Society telling me I didn't know what I was talking about, said Pete Conrad. And, of course, Pete was a jokester. He was the, 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 the uh, life of the party, any party. Well, he said that, and I talked to, uh, at behind my desk is our, our uh, uh, office uh, finance director and assistant to Karen Conklin, uh, Angie Roberts. And Angie said, did you see my new pun up there, Mark? Oh, I go, okay. Earth is mostly water, and it's not carbonated water. So does this mean the Earth is really flat? <laughs> so, ta -da. so I said, Angie, I'm snagging that off your desk, and we're going to have that pun on Stay Curious because that's a comment that Pete Conrad had all these flat Earth people telling him that uh, the Earth, though he went to the moon and back, that the Earth was round. Now, uh, all I've got to say to the flat Earth people is where do I sign up for the Flat Mars Society? Or the Flat Venus Society, okay. Flat moon. Or the Flat Moon Society, that's the right. <laughs> All right, one of the main missions of Apollo 12 was to put up a ALSEP, Apollo Lunar Science Experiment Project. And on there was uh, some really cool things that, uh, there was a small setup that Buzz Aldrin laid out while Neil was going around taking pictures. Uh, and uh, but it wasn't nothing like this, and they had several complicated uh, experiments on there. And one of them up close I wanted to show you was this laser. That is a, a I think it's a three foot square. You can tell by the moon boots there of laser discs, and this was aligned up to point to the Earth. Okay, and uh, so uh, at a certain angle, and all the time astronomers shoot lasers from the earth and hit this and get a repeat back. In fact, it's one of the famous uh, uh, Big Bang Theory uh, sitcoms on theirs where they go up on top of the roof of in their Pasadena flat and hit, hit, uh, hit a laser with the moon up there. And of course, Penny doesn't understand any of that. I think Penny's boyfriend's fundamentally involved with that. And we all know the Big Bang Theory. If you don't, just turn on the TV and start clicking, and you'll find a rerun somewhere on there. If the United States. Pardon me? Oh, if you're in the United States. Thank you, Marty, because we do have Ophelia in Paris. We've got Dean Salswittle in New Zealand. Of course, we were talking to Robert Law up there in Dundee, Scotland. And, tell, uh, tell them to message me if they want to figure out how to watch something they can't find online. Yeah, if you, if you can't find that episode, message us. Our Trekkie Techie, uh, Jen, uh, Jessica, will, will help you find we'll that. We'll That's right. Out. Now, here's a picture you don't see very often, and this is... Um, uh, uh, Al Bean. But how can you tell, Mark? Well, you don't really know for sure because both astronauts had white uh, spacesuits. Apollo 13, they put band, a red band around the commander on his thighs and his arms and a stripe on his helmet. Well, Apollo 13 didn't make it to the moon, of course, so Apollo 14 pictures are where we see the commander, uh, uh, Alan Shepard, uh, on there. And that's the second time I've mentioned Alan Shepard, and I forgot to mention today would have been Alan Shepard's 98th birthday. All right. Uh, our first American in space. So, but why I brag, brag this out is look at those lines there everywhere. All right. And what, uh, what Al Bean, why I know it's him is because he was responsible for the, the radioactive thermal uh, generator. And this, he's pulling this out, Marty, of quad, is that quad four there? Where the RTG would have been? Three. Oh, okay, it's quad three. Uh, uh, when you're looking at the ladder, the first quad is the one to the left, and then it goes around three, four, and five, and that's how the Grumman people knew where things were in a heartbeat. So he's at quad three pulling out the RTG to put in the power source, which is at his feet right there, to uh, uh, activate the ALSEP, the Apollo Lunar Science thing. Now, he's that, that particularly that thin, that small one he's got there. Marty, with your arrow, point out where he is at and that that is a... You see those other uh, lanyards there? Now, those are kind of big, and, and this is um, uh, to pull out this experiment, but the small one he has there, the thin one ne next to him, see that thin line there? That is a safety line rope or an access rope, and I'm going to have Jessica, please, if you would uh, zoom in again for me. Another surprise for you, Jesse. I have here 
in appreciation of your role in Apollo 14's success, this small portion of lunar surface safety line was carried by the astronauts to the surface of the moon in February 1971. Other astronauts had this. There you go. And that right there is a strip of safety line that was on the surface of the moon. All right. And I'm holding it in my hands, about 60 feet long. You say it does. It looks like it would snap if I put much weight on it. Well, it would on Earth, but duh, one six gravity on the moon doesn't have to be as, as heavy. And this is given to space workers. Uh, this was Edward Popovich got this for working uh, on the Apollo 14. Uh, we don't have one. We had, but and this is on display at our in our Apollo gallery. Thank you, uh, Nick Enix, for letting us share this with you. We sell these regularly for seven hundred to a thousand dollars in our auctions. All right, this is a very valuable and hard to find piece for you memorabilia collectors. But they're out there occasionally, and they go in auctions over a thousand dollars sometimes. We've got multiples: one to keep in our museum, one in. And at our safety place in case the museum uh, gets leveled by a hurricane. Uh, and that's how we roll is we have multiple things in there. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, I'll make sure I set that somewhere. Uh, I saw our eye on that, Mark Smith. We have a guest here, Mark Smith and Barb from Nashville. So I'm going to put that in my pocket there so that doesn't go anywhere else but, but with me there. Yes, the next auction is December 4th. Thank you for reminding me. December 4th is our auction. It will be live uh, here at our museum. We're not going to broadcast it live. We might. I might Good. flip my phone on or something, uh, but we could. But uh, Chuck probably wouldn't want you to do that whole thing. We might do the intro to kick it off. We'll yeah. talk to Chuck about that. But auctions are uh, very serious here, serious memorabilia. We become the fifth largest auction house for space memorabilia easily, and we will sell $200,000 worth of stuff uh, like this, maybe, uh, to you uh, 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 space lovers out there. Maybe we'll get to keep 30000 of it uh, as our, our take of it. Sometimes more. These things are consigned to us to sell, and it's about an 80-20 split. And then things that you just give us, we make all 100% profit on that. Well, what else did I load up here? Well, we cannot forget about Dick Gordon orbiting the moon by himself in what was the command module called? Anybody know? Kitty Hawk was what the command module was called. The lunar module was called Intrepid. Um, uh, Kitty Hawk's tail numbers, I think, is 108. Don't uh, get me lying about that. Uh, maybe 105. But I like this picture I chose. Dick Gordon was taking close-ups of the lunar surface for future landing. But there's the writing on the side that someone would put with a grease pencil on that strip of film after they processed it. AS-12, Apollo, so, uh, Apollo uh, uh, Saturn-12, uh, and then the numbers of the uh, that would be important to the technicians there. And we're going to play a shadow game with these astronauts. That's one thing as a professional photographer all my life. I've interjected myself as a shadow into some scenes where I'm photographing like a, a press conference outdoors with the governor of Ohio or something like that. But this is a very rocky area. The lunar module's over there. The astronauts are going down on their second EVA. They did two almost four-hour EV extravehicular activities. And there's the shadow. Couldn't tell which astronaut that is. There they have approached the Surveyor spacecraft for the first time. And I just love these shadows, the human element. We all know what a human looks like, don't we? And there we have it. Or for you uh, alien, uh, um, all of you uh, people out there, the uh, what am I thinking, the show that, that I enjoy watching Friday is uh, the space alien shows. Uh, I don't know, man. No, okay. I think it's only on your TV. No, it's not on my TV. But there they are again. That says aliens on a uh, alien world, okay, in spacesuits. And the uh, ancient astronauts is what I'm thinking ancient, about. Ancient aliens. Ancient aliens, the Mark. Crazy There's ancient, yeah, the crazy hair guy, ancient astronaut, Giorgio. Find a meme. We need to get a, we'll get a YouTube, we'll get a, a remote someday with those guys once we start Ooh, doing, yes. uh, uh, we get more savvy with doing things. And we are. We're going to take this to the level where we're going to get Robert Law and Dean Salswell maybe together, split screen uh, from their respective homes. That's right. one of my dreams. Put it on the list there. Robert 
Trekkie yeah, techie. Robert's gotta wear his kilt. But isn't that gorgeous? Robert's gotta wear his kilt. <laughs> I'm not sure Stay Curious is ready for that. Uh, but uh, you, you on YouTube, I know you're enjoying this on your big screen TVs. And what a what a thing it was going to be to watch these Apollo 12 guys with a video camera coming up to the uh, their surveyor. But that was not to happen because when they got it out and carried it out to set it up and it was color, it the lens cap came off. It accidentally got exposed to the sun and it bit it, it burned out the video tube inside of it. So this 15-year-old space geek was upset that we couldn't see live like we did from 11.30 in, at night on July 20th till uh, 1.30 in the morning, July 21st, Eastern Standard Time, the astronauts walking on the moon. All right. Uh, I accidentally hit that, Marty, if you heard a, a noise. Uh, did it a couple times. Did it a couple Yeah, sorry not to do that. I get so animated because it was so disappointing not to have live video from these uh, surveyor spacecraft that this claw scoop dug up the spacecraft uh, on a series of photographs. Uh, and these photographs are historic. All you space geeks know that. And here they walked up to see those trenches. Marty, if I could have the arrow, please. You see those trenches down on the bottom where it dug up. We didn't know the tensile strength of the moon. Was it going to be like clay and hard to dig up? Or more like sand and it turned out to be more like sand and these are the trenches dug up by that scoop at the end of a robotic arm show that up at the top marty and jessica you know where that scoop is don't you probably in the cosmosphere in kansas it is in the cosmosphere in kansas that scoop well we uh i think it's behind a glass screen but uh but yeah the scoop is there and the camera that they took off is in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And thank you, Alan. I wrote your name down, Alan, somewhere. He sent me a picture on our on our promotion of today's show of the uh, um, Charles Allen. Thank you. He sent me a picture of the camera in the Smithsonian. Sorry, we didn't have enough time to download it and, and get it up there today on there for uh, that's OK. Uh -huh. Just uh, now, don't, don't, because right, then I, she's turning my phone off, and oh, I won't yeah. turn it on again till Friday morning, because oh, no, uh, I forget about it, uh, and I should leave it in the other room. But, that, yeah, that was my tw tweaking there. Now, another thing we want to point out, there's more shadow play. Uh, I'm going this way, Marty. I'm going back this way, that way. Look at those beautiful shadows of those astronauts. Again, bet you never saw this picture, one of the astronauts there with like big boy jeans on there. That thing in the middle on the tripod is uh, helps them gauge true colors on the surface of the moon. And they did color in black and white. All the other, I think this is the last mission to do black and white. But there's a reason to do black and white because of the intensity of the sun of the sunlight on the moon uh, washing out some of the colors on color film. But also, they landed, look at these long, strong shadows. What time of day do you see these long, strong shadows on Earth? Around 8, 9 o'clock. And that was the low sun angle they wanted so that they could see everything on the moon. And look at this alien walking across the surface of the moon shadow. And he's, he's up high on the crater. He's looking down into Surveyor Crater, whichever astronaut this is. And there's Al Bean hammering. Uh, a, uh, a core sample with a hammer that he brought back from the moon and his artwork, some of his artwork that he's, his, his medium is plaster of Paris that he lays out on a canvas. He pounds his, he did pound his hammer into that and then put a moon boot, not one that he had on the moon, but a replica on that also. And then when he saw years into his art career that his patches on the wall uh, he looked at him. He took off his spacesuit he's wearing here. He noticed there was some dingy grayness to him. He goes, there's there's moon dust in that. So that he wasn't allowed to have moon dust or, or a moon rock. No moon rocks were given to the astronauts except a sliver at the 40th anniversary of Apollo 11, those that were alive. He flecked that on and put it in some of his mediums. So some of his paintings that go for $30,000 have moon dust in them. How cool is that? And there's their last one of their last looks out there, Lunar Module LM6, the very windows that Marty Winkle looked out there. Okay, but what were you looking at, Marty? You were looking at the side of the slaw uh, part of the time. He was just looking at white. 
but but there's coverage over the windows until just before launch. Oh, okay. Before closeout. All right, before closeout. But Marty, you looked out those windows. How cool is that? That looked out on the surface of the moon. What a legacy! What an Earth legacy there, of as we see the Earth rise again. And I'm gonna jump up to uh, one. I I gotta show these other. We'll go there. There, I gotta go jump to that picture because. You see that silver all over the lunar module there and the silver coating there are for to keep, they reflect back the sunlight so it doesn't get as hot and the inside is silver so it retains the heat. And look at what we have here from Marty Winkle's collection. You don't have to zoom in on that, but this is some actual mylar from the lunar module. This is off the bolt the fabric bolt, if you will, that this was on that all lunar modules used, all right, on there. And we've got we've got several layers here. Marty, this was used to cover specifically pyro the pyrotechnique battery, the battery that charged all the pyrotechniques. And there was a bunch of them around all quads of that lunar module that it released the explosive bolts and cut wires and pipes. In an instant, and so and Marty said this was going to be used on Lem Seven Apollo Twelve. I mean Lem Six. Oh, all right. He had two sets of these laid out to put on the pyro battery. He said, and see, there's 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 special tape on the back, and uh, he could have picked this one up or the one beside it to go to the moon. And uh, tell you what we're going to do, because Marty Winkle is so generous, he wants to help stay curious, and we're going to put together a, 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 uh, uh, a portion of this very mylar and sell to you, and we're going to start doing it when, when we come back from our Thanksgiving break uh, so you can get some out for Christmas presents. We're going to make a plastic little information, 8.5 by 11 sheet, with some of this on there to sell it to you to bridge the space between you and Marty Winkle working on the lunar module. How cool is that? I see the wheels turning over here already in there. But <laughs> Pardon me? And we're going to give, uh, Marty said he'd give uh, part of the proceeds to the museum. And I won't put him on the spot how much right now. But we'll do the math later. We'll do the math later, but I want 80, 20 at least. Marty needs to make something off of it. Uh, but we're going to put together very, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say one thing at our auctions, an eight by eight sheet. And Marty, these are about four, about five by five, probably. And eight by eight sheets regularly sold for $400 at our auctions. I mean, that was the, the low bid and some of them sold for more to be in your collection. So we're not going to say this is going to be cheap, but we want to make it affordable and add it to our galaxy of giving and uh and uh we we've got we've got a whole bunch of other ideas uh uh to to get you some memorabilia in exchange for your hard-earned cash to support your favorite nonprofit the American Space Museum and our foundation the US Space Walk of Fame so all right let's see did i get all the little things i wanted to show and tell in there there's the laser uh uh thing on there i'll i'll, I'll pass that out there uh, showed you briefly a lunar uh, 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 earth rise uh, to remind you that this Saturday we're going to have in our museum Nicole Stott, a uh, two-time astronaut, 104 days in space. She was on Expedition 21. And then she flew the last mission of Discovery, STS-133, which we recreate every day on our loop in our Apollo or our shuttle consoles over there. So we hear you, Nicole, every day. Welcoming everybody in uh, as she's floating into the International Space Station. You hear her say, hello, guys, and she gives a tour in there. You're going to love Nicole Stott, Saturday, 11 to 2, doing a book signing. Don't have my book in front of her for the first time in a while uh, called Back to Earth. It's seven chapters about solutions to climate change, and she's convinced me in this book, yes, we need to do some things and pretty fast to get our coral reefs back and, and get rid of all this plastic that's out there. Yes, Marty. Off the earth for earth. Off the earth for the earth. That's a NASA saying but uh, that is adopted. Off the earth for the earth, but Nicole Stott is all about, one, 
We're earthlings, everybody, each and every one of us, we're earthlings. Two, we live on a planet together, all right? One planet. And three, the only border that matters is the thin blue line of our atmosphere. This world doesn't have a thin blue line. Nothing can live on it. It's rock and then space. And we have an incredible thin. It's not even 10 miles of, of worthiness. You can't breathe on Mount Everest. That's seven miles high. Barely could you breathe. So we're going to have her doing her book signing here. And then she's going to be on Stay Curious from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock Saturday on a special Stay Curious show. And then we're vamoosing out of here to the rocket reunion that you still have time to catch an airplane for and meet a couple hundred uh, space workers at the Moose Lodge on Merritt Island Saturday. So busy days. We're so glad it's busy. Everybody's getting busy. Marty, we got a comment or a question? Yeah, I think it's funny. Uh, I'm Hugh Jack, sitting from Florida weather. 72 degrees in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Tom Usiak up there. Hey, Tom. And he sent me some pictures of uh, uh, his brother Mark's uh, launch of uh, Nicole's 133 space flight. So 72 degrees in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, we love that all the time here, but we're having stormy weather. And it's not going to be clear. It doesn't look like for the lunar eclipse that is going to happen Eastern Standard Time now. Four o'clock is the totality. Four in the morning tonight, tomorrow, Friday morning, okay? So set your clocks for 3.30. Have the coffee pot automatically make you a cup of coffee cup. That's what I'm going to be doing, basically. If you don't and, know how uh, to do that, I probably, can help you. Yeah, and if you don't know how to do that, a Trekkie Techie, Jessica Galloway can help us. And next week, we're going to do more promoting in the season of giving, okay, uh, to uh, get your name on our Galaxy of Giving constellation, as well as find other ways to help our beautiful museum. There's Jessica, Cheap Development. She hatches dreams into reality. And as you all know, including Tom Usiak and his brother Mark, uh, they have done, uh, they've been watching Stay Curious for a long time, and they're amazed at how professional we're looking. And all we got to do is just get rid of the old guy, me. So there's our second constellation we're working on with two galaxies. Uh, uh, Alan and Aerodyne donated us some money. We want to put your name up there for $100 or less, and we've got some other ideas up there. So thank you all for being with us on Stay Curious and uh, just revel in the thought that America was challenged by our great president, John F. Kennedy, to go to the moon before the end of the decade in 1961. And in 1969, dear president, we didn't do it once. We did it twice tomorrow, celebrating the 52nd anniversary of Apollo 12 landing on the moon. And the moon will be rising uh, full phase tonight, the, the eclipse of the moon. And it'll be on everybody's mind here the next couple of days. So think about these brave astronauts that did it for the second time. Uh, Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and Dick Gordon orbiting the moon. And tomorrow, Friday, and you know what Friday's all about, Tales from the White Room with Triple T, and we've got some good ones for you. So join me tomorrow, Mark Marquette, Marty Winkle, and Jessica Galloway, and our whole team here at the American Space Museum. Come see us to bridge the space between us.